Okay, so big news. We all know you've been with Triumph for a while. I'm sure this has been hard to uh, keep to yourself a little bit, but we finally have some racing news. Maybe unexpected to some, but it kind of makes sense. You have a brand that's new coming into the sport. Where do you go race when you don't have a production motorcycle yet? MXGP and MX2, because you can do it. Um, I guess the most simple question, you know, you hear rumors. Have you ridden this motorcycle yet? Yes, I've ridden. They have a wide range of motorcycles, and uh, I've been a part of the testing since the inception of the off-road um, off design and build. Uh, it started before COVID, and, of course, uh, I know everyone's like, when's it coming, when's it coming? Um, but that slowed us down, not to make excuses. Uh, but at the same time, this has been built from the ground up, and uh, it's, it's taken some time. Uh, as I say that, uh, the job so far, in my opinion, has been done the proper way. Um, we knew that it wasn't something that we could rush into and just, uh, you know, build that wasn't right or to the best of our ability just to, to meet deadlines. Of course, we want to, you know, have the product out there and be racing right now, but we only have uh, one chance at a first impression, as I said in the press conference. So it's important that we have the right stuff when it goes to production. Um, yeah, you can get around that stuff and tweak things, especially in the MXGPs um, with the rules and stuff. But uh, at the same time, it needs to be right when it even hits the track coming race time. So it's been a lot of fun. Yes, I've, I've got countless hours on the, on the machines. And uh, I've been pleasantly surprised and, you know, people are probably, you know, I, I just got to say I have to give it up to the engineering team, the research development team in Hinkley. They have done a fantastic job. They got a, a, a bunch of bright, uh, talented individuals there. How fun has it been for you, the fact that you've raced for multiple OEMs in this sport, of course, the record book speaks for itself, but to actually have any of those brands, you've had some say on what gets changed on the bikes, but to have this much involvement, this much say, has it been? That, I, that is a great question. So for me, this is why that pro, this project was so intriguing to me. Number one, I'm, I love to be a part of the ground up. Uh, and being able to share my knowledge and the things that I've learned throughout, throughout my career, you know, is very fortunate enough to grow up and race at a high level uh, on a steel chassis, on a two-stroke, uh, on a aluminum chassis, on a four-stroke, and a two-stroke. So um, I, 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 I know a lot of the tricks and the trades and things that worked back in the day as we were going through those learning curves. And we all know, especially you, they were, they were tough. Finding things that worked, finding things that didn't work. A lot of those things are already implemented in the productions now as tooling and dime is so good and so advanced in the engineering capabilities. However, uh, that's why I really liked this. And uh, they, they showed a high commitment level, and I was honest with them. I, I gave them my opinion of what I thought the benchmark needed to be, and they never batted an eye. Uh, they, they, they were all in. You know, it's a, it's a serious commitment financially to do that. They know that, and uh, they are committed to have the best bike possible. So that's what was fun to me, to, to get to share that knowledge with the, with the engineering and research development team and uh, progress on the bike. So this is a two-part question. It kind of comes to the decisions that have been made here with the bike to race. So first will be raced is the 250. MX2 is what they announced they'll go into first. And the fact that they are racing in Europe before the U.S. What is your personal opinion on that? How much say did you have in that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I would love to be going in the U.S. at the same time. But, um, you know, everything is always changing. I'm for it. I think... Um, we got some more news coming up here pretty soon that I think a lot of people will like. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not at liberty to talk about that right now. But I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, and, and I've been honest with them. Yeah, I would like it to go faster. But at the same time, I have to take a step back. That's the, the racer and Ricky, right? But then I got to look at it from a business standpoint. And, you know, waiting a little bit longer to have the right stuff and have the right plan. Sometimes good things just take take a long time for it to happen. So I have come to the conclusion and the fact that, hey, and we're gonna come out in 24 and this is the way it's gonna be in the MX2 team. And uh, then moving on to the MX GP team. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I would love, love to be, you know, but it's good. It's been, outside of that, it's been, you know, like I've been so involved with the development of the bike and not so much 
as the racing and when we're going to go racing and where we're going to go racing. I've kind of removed myself from that um, that part of it right now just because I'm just focused on getting the bike to where I think is uh, ready to go and we are we are there in my opinion. It's a very competitive motorcycle. Our, can you give us at least a vague idea of how long ago was it the first time you rode? Uh -huh. I rode I rode this motorcycle before COVID uh, hit so it's, it's it's been a long time and um, yeah, it's. I was blown away at the first te initial test that I got to experience the motorcycle and just how organized everyone was in the testing team. I mean, they had every part and piece that you could ever imagine to try, and that's what you have to have. And um, they certainly did their due diligence. Uh, every time that we go test, it's like, oh wow, you did. The, they did their due diligence. The changes or requests that we have were you know we're met and uh, we reached our we, we reached our goals and achieved our goals last one for you so you've done everything you've been top level champion in this sport you've been a team owner that has won a championship now you're in development does it ever circle back when when the heavy lifting of development is truly done do you see yourself getting involved heavily in the racing project once your your work is done per se yeah we're working we're working on that right now as far as above and beyond what my ambassador role is like Make no mistake about it, I've done more than just the brand ambassador side of things and I've uh, been heavily involved with, with all the uh, development part of it and, uh, and doing our due diligence on the teams and all that fun stuff. So uh, it's been fun. It is a position that I love and would love to expand on for the brand. There's no doubt about it. I think it comes in a perfect uh, time in my career. Talked a little bit about it at the press conference. Um, I, I like that, you know, and to your point with the knowledge that I have of working with all these manufacturers, all these great team managers and owners, I feel like, you know, I, I got a good grasp on things. Might not have the right answers all the time, but I feel like I have enough knowledge that I can share and, and help this program.